Good day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for our second part of our Pong game. If you just happened to stumble upon this video and you missed the first part, please go down to the description. The link is there for the first video. But this particular video, we are going to cover ourselves a little bit of behavior, which are the bread and butter of Construct. And then we're going to add a little bit of event scripting and get our game pretty much working. And the next video, we're going to polish it up and finish it off. So, in this particular one, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at behaviors to start with. Behaviors are a way of adding code to your objects without having to do anything at all. So realistically right now, I want this ball to be able to move around. I want it to be able to bounce off things. Well, that all comes under physics. So before I even go into that, let's click on behaviors. So I've clicked on the ball, click behaviors, and this here is your behavior dialog. It will show you all the behaviors that are attached to just the ball, sprite, and nothing else, okay? We can add, we can edit, we can remove, we can move up and down. Excuse me, but I'm gonna add one for the moment. And we're gonna have a look. These are all the different behaviors that you can add. And there is a ton of stuff that you can save here. Okay, or you can use here, I should be saying. So the one that we are looking for realistically is physics. And if you don't, again, if you don't know what they do and you wanna know, have a look at the description down the bottom. Simulate object physics, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna click add. You can see it's now added to the behaviors list. I could go in and then add another behavior if I felt like it, but for the moment, we're gonna leave it. And you'll also notice, close this dialog, the properties for physics have appeared just above where behaviors was. Okay, so if I click on the paddle, whoops, you'll see that there's nothing under behaviors, but if I click on the ball, there's everything under behaviors. All right, so it's extremely important that you do set up your objects, physics, or whatever like that, the way you want it. Some have less properties, some have none, some have more than this. But let's click on play, and let's see what the ball does. It falls. Why? Because it has physics, and gravity is pulling that ball downwards. Now, really, that doesn't make sense. But first of all, let's set up our ball the way we want it. And the first thing we're going to do is change the collision. Right now, it's set to a square. Doesn't matter, it's actually a circle or how I've drawn it. Construct 2 is going to treat it like a square. We're going to change it so it says circle. And all of a sudden, the physics engine is going to take over. It's going to say, no, it's not a square anymore, it's a circle. And it's not going to collide with the little empty spots on the corners. All right, continuing down the properties, friction is a bit annoying. If you have friction set to 0 0.5, every time the ball bounces on something, it's going to lose half its speed. So I'm going to set that to 0 so it won't lose any speed at all. Elasticity is how much it bounces off other object. So if it hits an object and it's got 0.2, it means 20% of the force is going to be returned. So if the ball falls down, hits something, it's going to bounce 20, oh sorry, um, what's that, a fifth of the original speed. So if we set it to one, it's going to go at 100% of the original speed. Finally, angular damping, set it to zero because we don't want movement to slow it down. Okay, what we've changed here, now lots of that was about colliding, bouncing, you know, not slowing down. So when we press play, it's not gonna change much. It's still just gonna fall. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in something for this ball to run into because it's currently falling outside the layer. Now, the reason we're gonna add something down the bottom and not add a behavior to stop the ball going outside our layer is because the ball will not bounce. And I'll quickly show you. So this part is temporary. I'm actually going to remove this behavior. Let's go to behaviors, add one. There is a bound to layout behavior. If I add that, you'll see there's not much properties. There's bound by edge or bound by origin. Let's just leave it as edge. Press play. That was debug. Ball falls and sticks to the bottom. Right. So we don't want that. We want the ball to bounce back up. And it's only going to bounce if it hits something that it can bounce with, which is another sprite. So I'm going to add in another sprite. So double click, sprite, and I'm going to call this guy boundary. Okay? Add him in, and I'm going to make this guy purple or a magenta color. Okay? Something really obvious, because I don't want to see this boundary at all, but I want it to do its job. Okay. So let's resize it. Put him in the right spot, which is just outside the layout. Resize him all the way across. It doesn't actually matter how big he is, just so long as he's not too small. Okay, so about that big, about the size of the ball would be perfect. Don't make him too skinny, otherwise the ball might go right through it. All right, 
by default, this is not going to do anything. We need to add some physics to it. So behaviors, add PHY, press enter, bang. We have physics on our boundary. Let's set him up. Let's give him so no friction because we don't want him to slow down. Let's give him the same elasticity and angular damping. Well, this guy is not going to move, so it doesn't actually matter that we don't touch that. All right, let's press play and see what happens. No bouncing. That is because this guy's got physics, and so he has to obey the laws of physics, which includes gravity. So what we do there, let's put him back in his rightful spot. This is quite easy. You just set immovable to yes. And watch this. And the ball should return to its original place every single time. There it is. So that's why we set up the elasticity and friction like that, because then the ball is just going to run really nicely for us. Okay, so the next thing we really should do is put a boundary on the top. We are not going to put one on the left and the right, because we want the ball to be able to pass through them, so we can score player one or two. All right, so a way to duplicate objects, there's heaps and heaps of different ways. There's three, in fact, that I'm going to show you now. First way is just by dragging in a new object. Drag, let go, and there you go. There's your next boundary done. Because I dragged this in after I set up the first boundary, he's going to have the exact same properties as this guy down here. He has a movable, he's no friction, he's elastic. Okay. The second thing that you can do to duplicate objects is copy and paste. So you can come to home, press copy and paste, and you can see I get the plus icon, and I can paste. But if you know your copy and paste shortcuts, we can control C to copy and control V to paste. Pretty quick way of doing it. And finally, this is the best one, learn it well, clicking on an object, holding the control key and dragging him out. And you can do that an infinite amount of times. Get to know them because they're extremely handy. Okay, so right now the ball's ready to go, the boundaries are ready to go, I can set them up and let them go. But realistically, we need to get rid of this gravity. This gravity is being dumb. It's pulling the ball down and the ball needs to go up, left, right and down. We don't want it to just go down. This is where we're going to bring in some scripting. The first thing we're going to do is tell the game, stop the gravity when the game begins. And you have to do that through your event sheet. So if I click on event sheet one, I just want to quickly explain one thing about event sheets. Each layout will automatically come with an event sheet unless you tell it not to. And if you click on your layout, you can see which event sheet it's using. One event sheet per level. There is a way to make two event sheets available to one level, but you can only have one initially, if that makes sense. Okay, you only have one event sheet that starts off with one level. In event sheets, you, the way you program is through events and actions. Events are triggers or things that happen, their times, their act, the, the sort of when the game wants to act upon something. It could be every tick, which is every single frame. It could be at the start of the game. It could be at the end of the game. It could be when a player dies. It could be when the, a ball collides with a paddle. These are all different events that occur. You then act upon those events with actions. Okay. When the player dies, if you want to respawn him down the bottom left, then the event is player dies. The action is spawn him over the other side. That's essentially how this works. So the, what we're doing now is we want to stop gravity when the game begins. The event, game begins. The action, set gravity to nothing. So event, and you can see, well, click on that event, I should say, or you can double click to add event, or you can right click and choose a number of things, but we're just going to focus on event for the moment. Now, event can come from many things. It can come from the whole game, so system, Ball, boundary, left panel, right panel. It can come from pretty much any object, including keyboards and mice and things like that. Our event is under system, because system basically is the whole game. And you can see these are all the different types of conditions, or these are the different types of events that can occur. So if you want, if an object is within an angle, if you want, if a layer is empty, if you want when the game saves, okay, different things like that. But the one we want is when the layout starts, on start of layout. Okay, click done, and it's added the event for us. Okay, so the event then can have actions underneath it. So you must have an event to have some actions next to it. 
okay? I could add more events down the bottom here and they could have their own actions. But at the start of layout, I wanna turn off the gravity. So this time I'm gonna to go to the ball because it's one of the objects with physics. And these are all the actions that you can perform on a sprite. So starting animation, setting the angle of the objects, okay? Destroying the objects, heaps of different things. The one thing I wanna do is, if I can find it, set world gravity, okay? Click next. And it's asking currently the default value for gravity is 10. That's how fast it pulls it down. So if I increase that to 100, it's going to pull the ball down 100 times faster. I could even set that to negative 10 and the ball is going to go up. So the gravity will be upside down. Or I could just go zero. Set the physics to the world gravity to zero. And there you go. So the ball has physics on it still, but there's just no gravity to pull that ball down. So what we need to do is shoot that ball off in a direction. So we're gonna be like we're kicking the ball at the beginning of a match. And the way you do that is by adding force to the object. So I'm gonna click add action, click on ball, next, and we're gonna scroll down to the gravity things again. And the one we are looking for is physics forces apply force at angle. Now you can see there's force and impulse. Force is like a gentle push, impulse is like a kick, okay, as hard as you want. So Force is just a nicer way of doing it. Impulse is just bloody do it. Okay, so let's go apply force at angle. Let's click next. And we've got a couple of properties for this action. How much force do we apply? 100 is pretty good. You can try something else if you want. What angle in degrees? So from zero to 359. So usually it's one to 360, but in this case, it's zero to 359. What angle do we want to apply the force? Okay, let me quickly describe forces to you. Right in construct is zero. That means that down is 90 degrees, left is 180, up is 270. Okay, so if you don't know your angles, I would suggest you get to know them because it's extremely important that you do know if you're going to work with forces. I'm going to set this to, I'm just going to leave it at zero actually and go image point, we're not gonna worry about him, that'll come later. Click done. And the one thing to note is all this stuff is gonna happen in a set order. So it's gonna start the layout, set the gravity to zero, then add force. It's not gonna do them all in one big hit. So let's quickly press play and watch all these actions happen. There he goes, off he goes. He does go straight through the paddle, but that's okay. Okay, so that's pretty much the essence of it, but we don't want the angle to be the same every single time. And it's impossible for us to do that. There's no such thing. So what we want to do is we want to set the ball to a random angle between zero and 159. Okay. And that's called a random number. So you just type in random and you open a bracket shift nine. And it says it's going to produce a random number from the range from zero to one less than this value. So whatever number you type in this brackets, these brackets, I should say, it's gonna produce from zero to one less. Because our angles range from zero to 159, I'm gonna type, oh, sorry, 359, I'm gonna type 360. So let me quickly explain that again. Random will take this number and produce from zero to one number under that one. So if you type in 359, it's going to produce a number between 0 and 358. Being 360, it's going to go to 359, which is exactly what we want. Click done. Okay, let's press play. How cool is that? The ball just went up and to the left. So refresh, I'm going to click on the refresh button to start my game again. And you can see it goes at a different angle. Try it again. 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 Try it again every single time it's going to have its own unique angle. The only problem we're going to run into is if the ball accidentally goes straight up or straight down, then the ball's going to get stuck in the middle. It's very rare that that will actually happen, but it's just something you need to keep in mind. Right now, everybody, I'm actually going to leave it at this point because the next video, we're going to set up the controls for the paddles and the collisions, and it's going to take a whole lot more effort. But get your game up to scratch, get to the same points. You can even add some own graphics if you really feel like jazzing it up a little bit. But for right now, everybody, I'm going to see you in the next video. Catch you then.